Now I have them doing just under 2.3 billion and close to 3 billion in 2024, and then pushing over 3.3 billion in 2025. With good earnings out on the table now and the Fed pretty much out of the way, we're starting to see the market rally here. And it's been our thesis that we are going to have an end of year rally as long as we held 4,200. And while it was ugly, we definitely did so. And so in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the market reaction and earnings that were out. Along with that, I do want to dive into Palantir earnings here. Reason being is the Palantir is absolutely skyrocketing and I, re I want to readjust my valuations on Palantir to make sure I'm not personally missing anything. So let's get into it. PayPal reported earnings and for me, this was a B minus. The, the pros I want to highlight is that people were counting this stock out. People were counting their platform out and I thought revenue growth was going to come in maybe flat to slightly up, but it had an 8% year over year revenue growth. Cons are user base came down slightly and margins came down. Free cash flow was a little light. But overall, I would say with how much is being priced bad for the stock, that this was about a B minus grade for me personally, and the stock is being rewarded for that. I thought CVS had about a B earnings as well. One thing I didn't like with CVS's report was the fact that a recent acquisition that they've had is going to incur much higher expenses due to the interest rate environment, and that is gonna eventually impact bottom line. So that definitely bothered me a little bit here, but this is a company that is very, very strong fundamentally. If you miss the price action on the stock, when earnings initially came out, the stock dipped to $65 a share, going down roughly 7%. I put out a video saying I thought earnings were good and I think this is a buying opportunity. Fast forward to today, it is ripped up around eight to 9%. Another stock shout out is going to be Verizon. This started trading right around $30 a share. And we had a fair market value on the stock sitting right around $32. So anything under $32 was just more compounding growth that you could get for the projected rate for the projected growth rates that we had for the company. And as we can see here, if you did get in around that $30 mark, you've gotten rewarded on strong earnings, strong free cash flow guidance. And it looks like that dividend's going to stay intact. And it looks like they can handle a lot of that toxic debt. As I stated before, I think this one's gonna settle in right around 35 to $37 a share. I don't think we're gonna see it go much higher than that. I could be completely wrong here, but that's about where I think this settles in. So if you didn't get in around $30 a share, I technically think you missed the majority of the move which is now going to lead us to Palantir. Now, this is probably the most popular stock next to Tesla, and people either love this stock or they hate it. For me, I'm fairly neutral. I did have a price target of six to $7, did hit those levels, and now it's time to reevaluate because the stock is up over 20% at one point in time of today. So what I wanna do is kind of just review the earnings and update my analysis with you guys. So the biggest thing I'm gonna be looking for when reviewing this Palantir earnings is going to be forward guidance and margin expansion here. So we can see revenue grew 17% year over year to $558 million, and customer count grew 34% year over year. And so very, very strong growth still for the company when we look on an adjusted eps it was seven cents and when we look at it in a gap basis they earned three cents a share now, this is a very high valuation stock uh, that's earning three cents a share and it's growing 17 percent, which is strong growth but you know there are other companies out there that are trading for cheaper valuations in my opinion that are growing revenue pretty close to 20 percent as well so you know it just may it just depends on how much forward revenue growth you think they can achieve in this high double digit range. So I do have Palantir growing 25%. I'm actually gonna leave that unchanged. We're gonna move forward into this report. So they are raising full year 2023 guidance to $2.2 billion. And so when we look on my model, I actually had them doing $2.4 billion of revenue. So I'm gonna guide that down a little bit. Now I have them doing just under 2.3 billion and close to 3 billion in 2024, and then pushing over 3.3 billion in 2025. You know, I think with how fast they're growing, this is absolutely achievable. Cost of revenue is actually remaining flat while revenue is growing pretty strong here. That usually means that there is a competitive advantage with the company and that brings in gross profits stronger, which is gonna expand margins as well. So all this is definitely good when we look longer term on the company. Sales and marketing did come down. Research and development was pretty much flat. General administration did come down as well. So income from operations was almost $40 million versus a loss of 62 million. What we're seeing here is that interest income is becoming a pretty big part of what they're doing. And that's their cash earning interest. They're actually making more money on idled cash than they are with the physical business. So um, while the business is heading in the right direction, this is obviously nice icing on the cake, but 
you know, I want to make it clear that the majority of the money that they've been making over the last nine months is not coming from operational income. It's actually coming from interest income. And so they said they were going to be doing share buybacks and see here that they had under 2.1 billion shares outstanding. And now it's at 2.16 billion outstanding. So even with the share buybacks, they're still diluting here. I wouldn't be too thrilled with that because when we look at it on a nine month basis, that's almost 100 million shares of dilution that was put on the market. In my model, I have just under 2.1 billion shares outstanding. So I'm just going to round that up. To, as we can see here, they have over $2.2 billion in marketable securities. And that's that, that's that interest that we're seeing come through on interest income along with a billion dollars of cash and cash equivalents. I would say the most interesting thing that's taking place with the company is the fact that margins are expanding and they're maintaining decent revenue growth. Um, personally, I would like to see stronger revenue growth uh, because this was a company we were projecting over 25% revenue growth. And so um, this does throw off my personal fundamental analysis for me to be uh, buying the stock. But if you're already a shareholder, the things that you would like about this is that they are gaining some sort of competitive advantage because margins are expanding. They still are growing revenue pretty strong. Obviously, the idled cash they're earning a tremendous amount of interest on, you know, dilution's still going to be a story here, which I'm actually really, really surprised about. So in order for me to get interested in the stock, looking for a 12% compounded rate of return, I'm still going to be in the wheelhouse between 7 and $8, which is actually an increase because of the margins expanding is actually an increase to where it was before I was between six and seven dollars now I'm between seven and 850 call it um, with a fair market price around 2030 being around 22 dollars a share and so here's the problem that I'm personally having because I'm not in the stock is that when we look at where the stock is rallied to you know it's pretty much getting close to $20 a share. And that's where I personally would be taking profits when I look at my analysis here. And that's what happened last time. I did trade this stock getting in at $6 and I think I sold around 12 or 13. Didn't have a huge position, but it was getting close to a very long futuristic price target for me. And so I just took the profits because of how fast it appreciated. I actually took profits because it was reaching a 20, 30 goal uh, very, very quick. And it really, it really has held these levels pretty strong, much stronger than I anticipated. And it looks like from a technical analysis that it is going to break out to new highs here, especially if it breaks above about $18 a share, $19 a share. We're probably going to see um, fairly new uh, one-year highs in the stock. You know, but just to put things in perspective here, this is a stock earning $0.03 cents on a gap basis, roughly $0.07 cents on adjusted basis. So even if they can start earning, you know, $0.12, $0.13 cents consistently a quarter, let's say that they average roughly 12 cents a quarter next year times four quarters that comes out to 48 cents and the stock is trading close to 18 dollars divided by 0.48 you know you're looking at a pe ratio of 37 and a half times and that does seem reasonable overall the problem is that the growth rates are really not supporting a a high multiple like this where you know I would want to see it closer to 22, maybe 25 times earnings on revenue growth around 17%. You know this would put it in line with almost like a Google type multiple, and so that's where it kind of makes sense for me. What I think is taking place here is a lot of people are front running the excitement of the stock and the fact that they are getting on the positive things here. But then the question becomes, as a fundamental investor, a when do you take profits, or b if you're interested in the stock, when does it make sense to take on the risk? because a lot of perfection is being priced in here. So as always, appreciate everybody's time. Thank you so much for spending it with me and we will see you in the next one.